A few days ago, disaster struck. I was going about my normal business with my MacBook Pro on my hand and suddenly a call came in. Not an emergency by any means, but somehow I kind of felt compelled to answer anyway. In the haste to answer the call, I fumbled with my MacBook Pro, a 2010 model nonetheless, leaving it broken and ruined for life. In this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly what I did to make this damaged MacBook Pro usable again. Now, this was left of my laptop, a 2010 MacBook Pro, which well wasn't all that the newest, but I kind of got by easily with most of my internet and office tasks. Considering its age, this laptop already had a few dents here and there and was even missing a few screws, which in any case wasn't a problem and considering that I had bought it off eBay for about 100 euros without a hard drive. At the time, the laptop only had 2 gigabytes of RAM. It was quite easy for me to lay my hands on two 4 gigabyte DDR3 RAMs each and upgraded the laptop to 8 gigabytes. I also added the 120 gigabyte SSD which I bought off of Amazon for about 14 euros. All in all, bringing the total price of the laptop to about 114 euros. Ideally, since it's just the screen that is broken in this case, I want to imagine that the main board and its components are still intact. Well, to confirm that, I'm going to be grabbing the 65 watts charger the laptop came with and plugging it on to see if there is still an element of life left in it. Surprising this laptop appears to still be working. Fans were spinning like normally and after a while I could hear the Apple startup chime. At this point, I kind of felt motivated again realizing that there was still something I could do to salvage this piece of technology that quite a lot of people would have given up on. But the problem now was that I had to make this laptop somehow display on the screen and for a second, I had absolutely no idea how I was going to go about that. I checked out some few YouTube videos and realized that I could get a DisplayPort cable for Mac and simply plug it onto a normal monitor. So without thinking, I ordered one on Amazon which got delivered the next day. So I grabbed my choice 24 inch HP IPS monitor, plugged on the DisplayPort cable to the monitor and onto the MacBook and now was the moment of truth. Interestingly, this MacBook Pro booted up easily without any hassle and suddenly from nowhere I now have a bigger display for my laptop. Honestly, I've been secretly lusting over a bigger monitor for my MacBook Pro. Hey, don't get me wrong. This 14 inch laptop has served me extremely well but sometimes you just need that extra screen real estate to really get things done. I have been eyeing some of the larger monitors in the market imagining all the possibilities that will open up if only I had some more space to work with. I know it might sound like a small thing but sometimes the little things can make a big difference and somehow I'm perfectly content with my current setup. <laughs> well, at least for now. So although the laptop has booted correctly, I still needed to check to be sure the keyboard had not been compromised in any way. Amazingly, everything seems to be perfect fine. Installed is the Mac OS High Sierra 10.13.6, which Apple released in 2017, which was kind of specially designed to be compatible with the older Macs. And given that mine was a 2010 MacBook Pro, this made it quite possible for me to enjoy some of the key features of this version of Mac OS, which included, amongst other things, improved graphics and VR capabilities, including support for external GPUs. The way it seems, this is going to be my new setup for a while. And before I settle into my new reality, I think it makes sense to clean this laptop. I really didn't do that when the laptop first arrived. Initially, I set out to do a deep clean, taking out all the components of the MacBook Pro, cleaning off the old thermal paste and reapplying a fresh one. But like most Apple products, having the right screwdriver set is going to go a long way in helping you take out the very many components of this laptop apart. Unfortunately, I couldn't really lay my hands on the particular screwdriver I needed to take off the battery as well as the logic board. More so, the laptop wasn't looking very dirty as one would expect considering its age. Obviously, the previous owner must have done a very good job in taking care of it. So I'll also be going with the assumption that the thermal paste on the processor as well as on the graphics chips have also been wet taken care of. In any case, I still use my dust blower which I got from Amazon to carefully blow out all the dust and debris that had built up over time within the laptop casing as well as on the fans. Typically, it's a good idea to regularly give the fans of your laptop or desktop computer a good cleaning. Failure to do this might cause your device to slow down and work less efficiently and in extreme cases might cause severe damage to your hardware. Now that it's all cleaned out, I realized that I could still make this displayless notebook look a little bit more appealing and with the display connecting cable still hanging on both sides of the laptop, I didn't want to be constantly reminded of the terrible trauma my MacBook Pro had been through. So I went ahead and did a little bit of surgical operations just to tidy things up a little bit. It took quite an effort to get the display hinges completely out. In the end, it looked way better than it was immediately after the accident. 
Finally, I reassembled the MacBook Pro. Unfortunately, it was missing a few screws. It's pretty easy to get a replacement for this on Amazon, but since I still have like 95% of the screws still in place, this should just be fine. Finally, I gave the laptop a decent clean using a glass cleaner and a microfiber cloth. Funny enough, I unconsciously still try to clean the laptop screen. I guess it's going to take quite a while for me to finally come to terms with the fact that I now have a displayless or better still, a headless MacBook Pro. You see, I must say I'm super satisfied with the final turn of events. Although I have a 24 inch monitor while still being able to enjoy the benefits the Mac OS has to offer, somewhere, somehow, I still feel a little bit angry with myself as to having attempted to take a call while having a laptop on the other hand. One thing is clear though, a MacBook Pro with a broken screen can still be replaced. I occasionally see good offers for a MacBook Pro display on eBay for a little less than 100 bucks. And with the right technical know-how, one should be able to get this replaced. But if the only option you have is to get it replaced from an authorized Apple service center, then things can quickly become very expensive. As for me, I really do think I'm going to stay with this new setup, but not without first checking to see if there are any performance differences between this and a similar MacBook Pro in this next video. Until I see you again, peace.